Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Scott, and today we're going to be painting an Auric Mega Boss from Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Specifically, we're painting the Warhammer Plus exclusive miniature, which is going to be a super cool addition to my Orc army. So let's go ahead and dive into how I painted it. To get this model ready for painting, I've primed it using Charcoal Gray Paint Plus Primer from Rust-Oleum. We're going to start this project off by painting the skin first. We're going to base the skin using Auric Flesh. And when you do this, you just want to make sure that you don't put the paint on so thick that you blur the details of the face. Once that base color has dried, we're going to take Beal Tan Green and we're going to use this to do a overall wash on all of the flesh. After we've allowed that shade to dry, we're going to take Elysian Green and we're going to use this to highlight all of the raised edges and the details of the skin and face of the model. Now that we have the skin done, we're going to begin working on the pants on the model, and we're going to base this using Thunderhawk Blue. We will shade the pants using Drakenhof Nightshade, and you can go as heavy as you'd like with this particular coat of shade. It won't make too much of a difference in the end. Once that shade is dried, we're going to bring back Thunderhawk Blue, and we're going to layer this over all of the raised ridges and the creases on the pants. It's time to begin working on the armor, and we're going to start by basing select armor panels using Balthazar Gold. Once that metallic color is in place, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and we're going to do a light wash over all of the copper panels that we've just painted. Once that shade is dried, we're going to layer over the copper using Gehenna's Gold. Now this particular armor has a lot of dents in it, and so we're only focusing on the raised ridges and any of the spots where we think it should look a little bit more gold rather than copper. Our secondary color for our armor is going to be Temple Guard Blue, and we're going to paint this on all of the armor panels that we did not paint with the gold. We're going to shade all of the blue armor panels using Contrast Talazar Blue. Now I do water this down just a little bit, just so that it doesn't darken down the color of our blue too much. Now we're going to bring the Temple Guard Blue back again, and we're going to layer over the raised ridges of the armor, just like we did with the gold layered over the copper. Next we're going to take Mephiston Red, and we're going to paint this on the loincloth on the model, as well as the plume that's coming out of the Stormcast helmet that he's holding in his hand. And I apologize for the camera angle, I wasn't paying attention when I did this part, and I kind of let the base plate get in the way of what I was painting. Once that red is in place, we're going to shade it using Carburg Crimson, you want to go nice and heavy with this shade so that it gets into all those recesses, especially on the plume. After we've allowed that shade to dry, we're going to take Evil Sun Scarlet, and we're going to layer this over all of the raised ridges on the red parts of the model. Next, we'll do an additional layer of highlighting, this time using Wild Rider Red, and we are focusing on just the most crisp edges on the red parts of the model. Now, this next step might seem a little bit weird, but we're going to take Moot Green and we're going to use this to base coat the head of the axe as well as the blade of the dagger that's on the model's belt. Once we're finished with that green, we're going to take Beal Tan Green and we're going to wash this over the axe head. Now, 
For our next step, we're going to take Lead Belcher and we're going to layer this over the axe head. The goal here is to make it look like the metal is chipping away to reveal just raw Y energy coming out of the weapon. We're also going to paint any other details that we want to have Lead Belcher at this time. Now that we're done with that, we're going to take Rhinox Hide, and we're going to use this to paint any of the wood or leather that appears on the model. This includes the handle of the axe, as well as the bar that holds up his icon on his backplate. Next, we're going to take Baneblade Brown, and we're going to paint this on the handle wraps that appear on the axe, as well as around the wrists of the model and the calves of the model. We're also going to take more gas bone and we're going to use this as the base color for all of the bone and teeth parts that appear on the model. With those various base colors now in place, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and we're going to wash this over both the brown and tan as well as any of the metal parts that aren't the axe head. We're going to shade all of the bone and teeth on the model using Contrast Skeleton Horde. And you don't want to go too heavy with this because it will turn your cream bone color into more of a brown. And we don't want that. Once those shade colors have dried, we're going to take Screaming Skull and we're going to layer this over all of the bones and teeth on the model. And we are focusing just on the ridges and any flat surfaces that need to be brighter. We'll do an additional layer of highlighting on all the bone using Wraith Bone. And while we're at it, we're also going to paint the right knee pad with the same color. And this is just to add variety to the armor. Next, we're going to take Stormhost Silver, and we're going to layer this over the chainmail on the armor, as well as any of the Stormcast Eternal heads that are scattered across the model. Now we're going to take Xandry Dust and we're going to go back and edge highlight all of the wraps that are on the handle and wrists of the model. We're also going to take Mornfang Brown and we're going to go back through and give a wood grain texture to the handle and any other wooden spots on the model. We're also going to paint this random pouch that is hanging off the back of the model. Our final step in this project is to take Seraphim Sepia and we're going to water this down just a little bit and use this to shade the white knee pad that we painted earlier. If you wanted to do an additional bit of detail, you could go back through with Wraithbone again and highlight the raised ridges of this knee pad. And with that, we have finished painting the Uruk Megaboss. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, go ahead and like it and then subscribe to my channel so you can see future videos I make. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my channel members that make videos like this possible. If you would like to become a channel member, hit the join button below this video. As always, have an amazing day and we'll catch you in the next one.